Hey everyone, this is Andrew Tan. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be talking about PlayStation 2 emulation on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. So this is going to be mostly focused on the PCSX2 emulator and I'm going to be talking about how to install the emulator and also how to get the best performance and compatibility for it. At the end of the video, I'm also going to show alternate ways of actually installing this. All of the information that I'm going to be talking about is going to be listed on the Apple Gaming Wiki website under the PlayStation 2 article. I'm going to leave a link to this in the description. Any kind of new optimizations are going to be listed here as as well as all of the methods as well. So if you come to this video in the future and you want to know how to do this in the most up-to-date way, please visit the article on the website. So if we look at the release history of the PCSX2 on the desktop operating system, we'll see that on the Windows side, this has the kind of most up-to-date version. So at the time of recording, we're looking at PCSX2 1.6.0, which was released in May 2020. This represents the best way to play emulated PlayStation 2 games. Fortunately, we don't have access to Windows, of course, on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. And if we browse over to the Mac version of the software. The last release of this was in July 2012. You can see it's built for Lion, so it's kind of ancient. It will not work on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. So therefore we're going to be relying on this person called Hello Crinkles PCSX2 port for the Mac operating system. And this works relatively well on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac, as well as the 64-bit Mac operating systems on the Intel side as well. So Catalina, Big Sur, Monterey onwards. So I'm going to leave a link to this GitHub in the description and it'll also be in the Apple Gaming Wiki article. So we have the PCSX2 GitHub up here. All we need to do is to navigate over to releases and then we'll find the 64-bit Mac version here. So this was released at the time of recording. This is the last version and what I'm going to do is download this version which is the PCSX2 1.7.0. If I click on here now that's going to download the file. So once I'm in my downloads folder, I'm going to double click on this tar.gz file and that's going to extract it for me. So this is the PCSX2 file that we're looking for. What I normally do is to drag this into the applications folder and then I'm just gonna replace the one that I've already got there. What I'm gonna do now is to double click on the PCSX2 icon. It's gonna tell me that I can't open it because it's not from a signed developer. So what I'm gonna do is press cancel here. Then when we go to system preferences and then we go to security and privacy and then we make sure we're on the general tab and then PCSX2 is going to appear here because it's not from an identified developer. We're going to click open anyway. And we're going to click open again and then we're going to get access to PCSX2. This is the setup menu. It's going to close the rest of this. We're going to click next here and then click next. And this is the important part. We need to select a BIOS ROM. So technically you should have a version of the BIOS for the PlayStation 2 already extracted from a genuine PlayStation 2 console. However, you can actually quite easily find PlayStation 2 BIOSes. However, you can find plenty of PlayStation 2 BIOSes online. I'm not gonna to link to them directly, but if you just do a Google search, you'll be able to find and download them very, very easily. Please be careful about downloading random files from the internet. Make sure you get them from a reputable source. So anyway, once I've got my PlayStation BIOS here, which I've put on my desktop. So what we can do is to place them into application support, or we can just point them to the folder that we've got already. To do that, I'll just untick the default setting and then change the path of this to the desktop. And then it would see the console BIOS versions that I've got all stuffed into here. Alternately, we could put it into the application support folder. This is a bit of a cleaner way to do it. So what you do is you go to finder, you click go, you click go to folder, and then we go to this path here, which is the tilde for slash library. Then we go to the application support folder, and then we scroll down to PCSX2, and then we can put them into the BIOS folder here. So you could just drag and drop your BIOS files into the application support folder, but I'm just gonna leave mine there for now. So I'm gonna select the USA BIOS because that is the kind of most compatible for most games. We're gonna click finish here to finish that setup process. And now we have the PCSX2 standard menu. So the kind of first thing that we wanna do is to load up a game. I'm gonna click on the PCSX2 window to bring it into focus. And then if I click on C DVD, then we can select an ISO. Just some background, an ISO is a PlayStation 2 file. So I'm gonna show you my ISO folder and these can be downloaded off the internet. I'm not gonna give you specific specific links for these ISOs, but they are very easy to acquire now. If you just Google the name of your game, PS2 ISO, then you're gonna find loads and loads of links for various games. So basically I've got my PS2 folder here. I'm going to select my PCSX2 window and I'm gonna click C DVD. We're gonna click ISO selector and then browse. So I'm going to find my folder here, which is on my desktop, and then I'm going to select a game. So the first game I'm gonna test is Final Fantasy X. So I'm just gonna open that and then show you how it works. Once that's loaded, we actually need to boot it. So I'm gonna press boot, and then it's gonna give us this window here. So just be aware that this particular part is just kind of the, the debugging 
menu here is telling us what's actually happening. And then what's kind of useful about this window here is that this is where the actual game is happening. This is showing us the speed, the frame rate, kind of resolution as well. You have to remember as well that PlayStation 2 was in a four by three square ratio. So you can get some games with some widescreen aspect ratios, but mostly they are in four by three. That's the most compatible way to actually play them. So just gonna minimize this game. And then I'm just gonna talk a little bit about the input methods. So on my MacBook, I'm going to be connecting my Xbox wireless controller. So I've already paired this via Bluetooth preferences. So if you haven't done this already, just go to system preferences, go to the Bluetooth menu, and then connect up your Xbox wireless controller. You can pair your wireless controller by turning it on and then pressing the pair button, and then you'll pair it onto here. This particular version is quite compatible with the Xbox controller that I'm using. So all you have to do is to go to, I haven't found any issues using my Xbox One controller natively on this. However, some people have said that they've had issues with their DualShock controllers. If you do have any issues, you can just go to gamepad settings and then just remap your controller onto the actual emulator and it should work fine. So I'm just loading up the game now. So I'm gonna show you a bit about how this works. So in terms of graphics settings, you'll notice that this is like a really low resolution. So it's running at 512 by 416. And that's kind of the original PlayStation 2 resolution. We can do a lot better than this, however. If we go to config and then video settings here, we can go to the plugin settings. And then this gives us the option. It's gonna pause the actual gameplay. So I'll set the internal resolution to three times to 1080p. I'm gonna press okay. I'm gonna reload the game again. So you can see here it's running at 1536 by 1248. So you can see that the clarity of this scene is much better than the kind of native resolution. This is actually a lot closer to the Final Fantasy X remaster that you can play on parallels on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. We can emulate quite well here. So I'm just gonna talk you through some other games too. So I've got Shadow of the Colossus here, and this only works when the renderer is set to software mode. So I'm just gonna switch that now, and I'm just gonna load this game up in the native resolution. And as you can see, it's kind of working a little bit slowly, and it definitely has some graphical errors like this per missing texture here. I wouldn't say that this is particularly acceptable. I mean, it was barely acceptable in the actual PlayStation 2 era and the actual remasters and running this at a higher resolution, I'd say is pretty much required to play this game. However, it does show that this game can run. And if we had slightly more improved performance in this emulator, then this could be a game that's worth running. I'm also able to run a game like Persona 4. So this is basically the only way to run this game on a Mac. Persona 4 Golden does not perform correctly on crossover and it doesn't load up on parallels either. So this is basically the only way to play and it seems to be running fine. So another game that doesn't work very well is Tekken 5. So I know that Tekken 5 definitely has a lot of challenge running on PCSX2, even on more powerful processors. It's running about 50% speed. I would say it's not really playable when you're aiming for 60 frames per second. So this game is Odin Sphere. This kind of came out right late in the play PlayStation 2 lifecycle, but because it's a kind of 2D game, it's not very demanding on this particular emulator and we're able to run this game at 60 frames per second. These less demanding titles do run quite well. Another interesting game is Kingdom Hearts 2, which seems to be running fine on this emulator. This is also probably one of the only ways to play the game, whereas the remasters aren't working on parallels or crossover at the moment. So the last game I'm testing is God of War 2. So you can kind of see that the performance is not quite there and there's quite a lot of visual bugs as well. So I, I'm aware that there are ways of fixing this on Windows. However, you can see that the dock experience is not that great for God of War 2. So in addition to the Mac port of PCSX2, I've also been testing other methods that people have suggested. For example, I've got here running PCSX2 1.4.0. And as you can see, I would say the performance is not great and I don't think it's necessarily worth running this through crossover. You're not gonna get better performance. The Mac port is gonna be much better performance wise. I've also tested out PCSX2 1.6.0 running through Windows 11 ARM running via Parallels. And understandably, the performance here is not particularly good either. This is no surprise given that we are emulating a PlayStation 2 game on a Windows 11 ARM operating system, which is actually emulating the X64 application onto the ARM instruction set. And this is being virtualized on the Mac operating system. So there's a lot of layers of virtualization and translation involved. And of course, this performance is not gonna be great. So this is about as far as we're able to push PlayStation 2 emulation on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. And really we have Tello Crinkle, who is the modder who made the macOS port of PCSX2 to thank for the ability to play PlayStation 2 games on on the Mac operating system in the first place.
So I'm going to leave a link in the description for a form thread that Telecrinkle created. And this is where this person is keeping this macOS port alive. Telecrinkle is constantly updating this thread with new information and hopefully we'll get a new release soon which will fix some of the issues that we've been experiencing. So thank you very much for watching this video. If there's anything you think I could have done to improve the performance of PlayStation 2 games emulated on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac, then please leave a comment. Please check the Apple Gaming Wiki website for more updated information about the latest way to run PlayStation PlayStation 2 games on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.